dangling participles or modifiers are another common error that comes up on the SAT. We see a lot of examples of this in the SAT Grammar Tactics series, but let's look at a few now just to introduce the idea. So remember, a, a modifier, well, we'll talk about this later when we look at participles, but basically a dangling, a participle or a modifier is a participial phrase that hangs at the front of the sentence that usually, or is supposed to, modify the noun that follows it. Let's look at where that can go wrong. After he barked at the postal worker, uh, John scolded his puppy. So this actually isn't a participial phrase, but it's a subordinate clause, but the point still stands. After he barked at the postal worker, well, wait a minute, who is the he here? The he should be the puppy, right? Because it's the puppy that barked at the postal worker. But literally, it sounds like it's talking about John. After John scolded, after John barked at the postal worker, he scolded his puppy. That, of course, doesn't make sense from context. So we would, one way to fix it would be to flip this and say, the puppy was scolded by John. Now, that's not a great sounding sentence, so we might want to rearrange it in a different way, but that would be one way to fix it, because then our little modifier, or in this case, our subordinate clause, would make it clear as to what's be, what, who's doing what. Let's look at a better example with actually a participle. So wearing the uniform of a police officer, many people were tricked by the deceptive thief. So we've got a participial phrase here, wearing the uniform of a police officer, and this is going to modify the thing that comes right after it. But as written, it sounds like many people were wearing the uniform of a police officer. That's not what we want. We, we want the deceptive thief to be wearing the, the uniform. So we can change this by saying, wearing the uniform of a police officer, the deceptive thief tricked many people, right? That would move our thief to the front to make it clear that he was the one or she was the one wearing the uniform. Here's an example of something called a misplaced modifier. Now it's pretty much related to a dangling modifier, but let's look at an example. He found his wallet walking down the street. So we know what this means in context, right? He, this guy was walking down the street and he found his wallet, fine. But what does it literally say? It's literally saying, he found his wallet walking down the street. Remember, modifiers usually modify the thing they come right next to. So here, wallet is the thing walking down the street, right? So he found his wallet walking down the street. It's like saying, I found my brother walking down the street. That would sound like, well, it's kind of ambiguous, but you know that could be interpreted as, I, was, I found my brother while he was walking down the street, right? But here, that's also what it's literally saying. He found his wallet walking down the street as if the wallet had sprouted legs and started walking. So this is a misplaced modifier. We would have to fix this by making it clear that he was walking down the street. This is a la last example of a, another kind of dang modifier that doesn't come up too much. And this is one where there's actually nothing for the participial phrase or the modifier to modify. So. Smiling knowingly at the stranger, the sky thundered ominously. So wait a minute. Who was smiling knowingly? Was it the sky? No. But who? So notice there's no noun at all in the sentence that this could be modifying. So to fix this, we'd have to make it clear. Either we'd have to change the sentence around, or we'd have to make it clear who was smiling knowingly in this sentence.